الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافي مزيدا الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We spoke about the importance of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam and we are ending it off and it's very sad that usually as imams we try and choose a topic that is significant uh, for current time. The reality is the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam is not just a story for Dhul Hijjah. It truly is a story for all time in all months. But we see the significance more in the month of Dhul Hijjah, so therefore we take the opportunity to jump at it and try and abstract as much as possible. I want to read two things from the previous two Jumas. One is that the meaning of Islam is to submit. And Islam does not mean peace. But mentioned by the ulama and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most importantly that if we want to find salam in our life the only way to find salam in our life is through Islam. Meaning if we want to find peace in our life we can only find peace in submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, I want to mention that from the 70 plus ayahs of the Quran that Allah Ta'ala signifies, celebrates the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, it comes down to one thing. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ When Allah Ta'ala said to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Submit, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, أَسْلَمْ تُلِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Tired. And when we look at the stories of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, one can only but ponder what was the breaking point of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. There was no breaking point of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. In all circumstances, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam said, Aslam to the Rabbil Alameen. Whether it be against his father, whether it be against his nation, whether it be against the king of that time, Namrud, whether it be the king of Egypt trying to attack his wife, whether it would be the command of Allah to send his son to a place which was bare desert, whether it be to sacrifice his son, everything that we would see as a breaking point, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, Aslam to the Rabbil Alameen. It is a lesson for you and I, me in particular as a speaker, to question my aslam to. When I say I submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is my definition of my life? That majority of our depression, anxiety would go away once we have full reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? Aslam to li rabbil alameen. By leaving it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say that the best way to get in a person's mind is to understand one supplication. You only ask about that which is important to you. So what I thought in ending off the series of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is that we will go through the du'as together to understand the significance of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's life through how he thrived. And we can see this in his du'as. The first du'a that I would like to bring to our attention and think about any time in our life, whether it be family problem, mental problem, whether it be spiritual problem, whether it be financial problem, whether it be physical health problems. Just think about this du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, du'a number one. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is being flung into the fire. We mentioned last week that the fire was so big, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentions that they had to create a catapult to shoot Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam into the fire. And as Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is being flung, that, this is the breaking point. This is the point where you realize there's no other help. I'm going to be 
burnt or I'm going to, I'm going to see my repercussions of my actions. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam comes to him and Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, would you like me to help you? Would you allow me to help you? Remember the help of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam is the help of Allah. But look at the submission of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah suffices me. And Allah is the best disposer of my affairs. How many a times we feel frustrated, number one, with our own self when people don't understand us? How many a times you work hard, you do right by your family, you do right by your children, you do by right by society, but constantly, constantly, one is that they shun a blind eye, that is okay because our reward is by Allah, but many a times they take it the wrong way. What should our thoughts be? Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah will suffice me. And Allah is the best of disposers of my affair. May yahdihi allahu fala mudillala. Wa may yudlilhu fala hadiyala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, who Allah guides, no one can misguide. And who Allah Ta'ala misguides, by Allah no one can guide. So the doer, the sustainer, the nourisher, the provider is Allah. That is why in our salah, لا صلاة إلا بسورة فاتحة Our salah will not be accepted if we don't read سورة فاتحة. And we make one dua in سورة فاتحة. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير المغذوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا الله يا الله make me amongst those that you are happy with me because if you're not happy with me nothing else matters nothing else matters and ya Allah if you are upset with me <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and Ya Allah, if you are upset with me, then Ya Allah, there is nothing else for me. And that is the meaning of Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Is that I do things for the sake of Allah and my reward is by Allah. Allah is my protector. Allah sees, Allah hears. Allah sees, Allah hears. When we call out to Allah, when we call out to Allah, Allah says, I promise you I will answer your dua. I promise I will answer your dua. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. So my dear respected brothers and elders, I have many youth that come to me. Just last night, I was serving in the shop and a few months back, myself, Uncle Yusuf Katri, and Uncle Usman went to visit someone. And I met this person again after a very long time. And it was sad to hear that, subhanAllah, her son had left. Her son had left because of something that he was hiding. Something that was impacting his heart. And he had left for the right reasons. And everybody around saw it for the wrong reasons. Do what is pleasing to Allah whether people see or don't see. Let that be your criteria. Do not waste your life in trying to prove to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the creation of Allah who you are and what you're trying to do. Do not waste your life and your time. Do not waste your life and your time because your time is so short. We're 20 years old, we're 40 years old, we're 60. Khalas. Whatever's in between, wallahi, we forget. If we forget, does it have significance? If we forget, does it have significance? And the answer is no. Forgive, for, forgetting, it's in the past. So my respected brothers, this is a call to me and to my fellow brothers. Do not waste your life in trying to prove to others 
who you are or what you're trying to do. Do for the sake of Allah. Allah sees when no one sees. Allah is the one that gives sustenance to the smallest creature under the smallest rock. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains that animal. And Allah ta'ala sustains the biggest of animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sufficient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and he knows what you're going through. And that is why our scholars of deen say, when we are going through a circumstance, say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'm al wakil. Oh Allah, ya Hasbun Allah, you suffice me and you are the best disposer of my affairs. Whether the dunya sees you as a criminal, where the dunya sees you as a bad person, at the end of the day, it is irrelevant if Allah has accepted you. This reminds me of a story at the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when the, the leaders of the tribes came to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and they said that one particular man amongst the tribe was a man that was a criminal, he was unjust, he was a person that there was this ittifaqan, yani, there was this agreement even by Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that this person was a dhalim, he was an oppressor. So they came up with the conclusion that this person should be an outcast. And this was something that was very drastic. Because back in the day, no one traveled, and, and your safety and your life was around your tribe. So to be outcasted was, was as if there was no more life. A few years later, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam comes to his people and says to his people, remember such and such that we outcast? Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam has come to me and has informed me that he has passed away. So the Bani Israel said, good riddance. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, no, you, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. The archangel Ib Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam has come to give glad tidings of the acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this individual made so much tawbah so much tawbah, Allah had forgiven that individual. And on top of that, he made dua for the nation of the Bani Israel. Allah has forgiven the Bani Israel. Even though they thought bad of him, in the eyes of Allah, he was qabul, he was accepted. Then that's most counts the most. Sirat al an'amta alayhim. In the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a lady. And this lady came to the Prophet of Allah and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I committed zina. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he he turned away. Not out of disgust, but wanting this person to rather go away and make tawbah. And, and she comes in the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa again and says, Ya Rasulullah, I committed zina. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Are you pregnant? She says, Yes, I am. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, well, go away for nine months and give birth to your child. After nine months, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hoping that she goes and make tawbah in this time. She comes back again. And she says, Ya Rasulullah, I gave birth to my, to, to my child. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the child has two years haq of breastfeeding. Give the haq of the child. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants her to go away and make tawbah. She comes back after two years and says, Ya Rasulullah, I've given the haq to my child. The Prophet wasallam tells the Sahaba, take her and pelt her. As she's being pelted, some of the blood spills on Umar ibn Khattab and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu curses her. And the Prophet wasallam says, no, do not curse her. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not only forgiven her, but through her tawbah, Allah has forgiven the Muslim ummah. How many a times we take people on base value, or rather, how much of our time do we waste in interpreting, judging others? How much of our life do we become the source of someone's disgrace, someone's depression, someone's loss of life because of this tongue? And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I guarantee you paradise if you can protect two things for me. What lies between your jaws, your tongue, and what lies between your thighs, 
your private part, I guarantee you paradise. Because this is even sharper than a sword and quicker than a bullet. To, to sell bad news, you don't need Google paid ads, you don't need YouTube. To give something which is khair, it takes it hard, you need Google ad, you need all of that. But my dear brothers and elders, the, the saza, the, 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 the repercussions, is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so severe that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're walking past a carrion. And this carrion has become rotten that it's smelling. And he says to the Sahaba, would you eat this? And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, no, we will not eat it. This is smelling. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when a person speaks bad, whether it's a true or not, doesn't matter. Whether they speak bad about someone else, it is similar to eating the dead carrion that is smelling like this. This is how much it is disliked in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iyaka wa dhan. Inna ba'da dhanni ithmun. The word iyaka, when used in grammar, it's used in the sense of iyaka wal asad. The translation is, watch out, lion. Now you don't introduce yourself, say your name first. Something so uh, life-threatening, you would use the word iyaka to shout out, watch out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, iyaka wa dhan. Beware of suspicion. Inna ba'da dhani ithmun. You would find that the majority of your suspicion is a sin. So be part of those who are blinding themselves. Like Umar bin Khattab says, Ya Allah, this is on his deathbed. Ya Allah, allow me to see the faults within me and blind me from the faults of my community. Because the only way that we can recognize Allah is the point that we leave the faults of others to concentrate, coming alone, going alone from this world. And that is my qalb, my heart, my state of my ruh, the state of my life. And if I want to do that, I need to see the Muslim ummah as how the Prophet ﷺ says, as a mirror. As a, as a mirror that we only see goodness in others and not the badness in others. But if people see bad in us, Hasbunallah huwa ni'mal wakil. Repeat this again and again, that Allah suffices me, and He is the best disposer of my affairs. Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wa The second dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, that I would like to share with my beloved brothers, is Rabba the dua, that he says, Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Sorry. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati wa min dhurriyati. O oh Allah, make me from those who establish their prayers. There are many ways to, to say uh, performance of prayers in Arabic. It's very unique when Allah always brings salah, He always uses the word aqama yuqeemu. Aqama yuqimu, which doesn't mean just stand for prayers, it means establishments of prayers. Imam Ghazali rahimullah says something very beautiful. When he gives the tafsir of this aqama yuqimu, he says that one's day or routine is predominantly planned around one's prayer. And not the other way around where we plan our day. We plan our day and where we can find time, we pray. There's a big difference because if we establish our prayers as the establishment of our day schedule, then we're putting Allah first. But let me tell you something, it's not just putting Allah first, it's putting yourself first. I'll say this again. When we establish our day around our prayers, it is not only establishing Allah first, but it's also establishing us first in our life. Because when we realize the reality, the tangibility of this world is so fertile and so short, the way we deal with others will be with Silatul Rahim. It would be with, with kindness and mercy. It would be with if someone gives you a slap, 
you turn the other cheek and give him a kiss. If we understand the tangibility of this world. Today's time, subhanallah, we find that salah has become far-fetched. We find that in today's time, salah has become far-fetched. It has become something that we find the cutthroat ways and basically trying to push away our salah. It is said that being in the business world, that how many youth go through their prayers, go through the times of their prayers, and they don't pray salah anymore. And every time I would ask, I would say, uh, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, it's salah time, I got your back, let me take your shift, you go pray. He'd be like, no, Imam, it's okay, I'm going to pray at home. Oh, no, Imam, I'm not praying. And then two days that I'm not praying, and then five days that I'm not praying, I'm not, I'm not praying. When are you praying, Habibi? So when we find that our world becomes unstable, it's because we have created the instability of no prayers. Because as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, As-Silah Al-Mu'min As-Salah. That the weapon of a believer in this world is his prayers. And when we do pray, if we are part of those who pray our salah, we don't pray our salah up, down, touch the ground, but we pray it with its sunnah. We pray in a way that we prepare ourselves as if we're going to see the kings of all kings. How do we dress when we're going to see, when we're going to the courtroom? How are we dressed when we're going to see someone significant, someone important? How good we're looking do we look? And how do we look when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we understand that we're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rabbana wa uh, rabbi ja'alli muqima salati wa min dhurriyati. And this is the second part. My kids, they go to a Muslim school and they constantly tell me, Dad, it's so shocking to see so many kids, majority of the children at the school don't pray salah. And these are balik children that are not praying salah. We become upset, my dear brothers. We become upset when our children get B's, uh, D's, C's. Do we get same, in the same way angry when our children don't pray salah? Do we understand the repercussion that Allah Ta'ala says, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun and ra'iyati. That every single one is, of us is a shepherd and every shepherd will be asked about their flock. Let us make sure if we are part of an authority, then let's make sure that in our authority, those under us are praying salah. Whether it be our children, whether it be our establishment of our business, let us make sure if we're in charge, as Allah Ta'ala has made us duty bound, let us make sure our salah has been met. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua, Rabbana gfilli wa li walidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqoomul hisab. And the second thing, my respected brothers, before I end, is do not forget your parents in your du'as. We see that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's father was not a Muslim. Yet he made du'a for his father. How much du'a do we make for our parents? One day a sahaba came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam and he was upset because his father had passed away. And the Prophet of Allah made du'a for his father. And then the sahaba asked, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what can I do after the demise of my father, is there anything that I can still serve my father? And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned three things. From them was make dua for your father. How much of us are going to our parents' house? How much of us, my teacher, Mullah Suleiman Mullah used to always tell me back in the 90s, whenever I gave a lecture, before I gave the lecture, I would call my mother up first. I would get her duas, put the phone down, and then I would give a speech. But if I did not get my mother's dua, I would not give a speech until I got my mother's duas. You would see the successful ones by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were the ones that looked after their parents. By Allah, my dear youth, you can never ever outgrow your parents. By Allah, my respected youth, you could never ever outgrow your parents. And say words of kindness and passion when speaking to our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Jazakallah for the brothers in joining me on this journey of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this journey of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inculcate in our life this journey of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those who Allah is happy with and not amongst those who Allah is upset with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and guide us. Wa akhiru da'awana and alhamdulillahi